TLS is a cryptographic protocol and the cryptographic processes taking place within a TLS connection are specified by cipher suites that are agreed on by the client and the server at the beginning of the connection. Both TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3 offer multiple cipher suites to be used and in this lesson we will have a look at how the sets of cipher suites offered by TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3 differ from each other. TLS 1.2 is famous for its very large set of cipher suites offered. What you can see here on the left side of this slide is just a small extract of the cipher suites offered by TLS 1.2, with TLS 1.2 offering in total probably more than 200 cipher suites. The color coding applied to the cipher suites is again aligned with the color coding used in the previous lessons and should help with recognizing which part of the cipher suite maps to which cryptographic process. Blue is for the parts specifying the key exchange, green is used for the parts specifying the means of authentication of the server, orange and pink mark the parts for the ciphers used to encrypt and or authenticate the application data, and dark red at the tail marks the parts specifying the cryptographic hash functions used for either HMAX or the pseudorandom function PRF used for the derivation of cryptographic key material. Now, the original specification of TLS 1.2, as given by RFC 5246, released back in the year 2008, defined a set of 37 cipher suites and declared that the only cipher suite mandatory to implement is the first cipher suite listed at the top which is a cipher suite that uses RSA for both the key exchange and the authentication of the server, uses AES behind CBC with 128-bit keys for the encryption of the application data, and uses SHA-1 once for HMAC to authenticate the application data, but also uses SHA-1 within the pseudorandom function PRF for the derivation of the cryptographic key material used. Whether this mandatory TLS 1.2 cipher suite is secure is of course the right question to ask, but we will get back to this in a following lesson dedicated to an analysis of which of the cipher suites existing within TLS are still recommended for use. Here in this slide, we are primarily just interested on what type of cipher suites managed to make their way into TLS 1.2 at one point or another. Most of the other 36 cipher suites included in the original TLS 1.2 specification then either used RSA, static Diffie-Hellman or ephemeral Diffie-Hellman for the key exchange, used RC4, a stream cipher, or triple DES or AES as a block cipher behind the CBC block cipher mode of operation for the encryption of application data, and either used MD5, SHA-1 or SHA-2 with 256-bit hash values for HMAC and the pseudorandom function PRF. Subsequent RFCs released over the following years then added various additional cipher suites to provide support for more cryptographic primitives such as the authenticated encryption with associated data block cipher modes of operation GCM and CCM, static or ephemeral elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange, the use of pre-shared keys, the block ciphers Camellia and ARIA, as well as cha 20 Poly 1305, which is an authenticated encryption with associated data approach, making use of the cha 20 stream cipher together with the Poly 1305 message authentication code. Other RFCs released over the years then also prohibited some of the cipher suites introduced earlier, such as for example RFC 7465, which then explicitly forbid the use of cipher suites that used the RC4 stream cipher for the encryption of the application data. Adding and subtracting all the cipher suites introduced and removed over the years, I found that TLS 1.2 seems to know about just around 200 cipher suites, so the 22 cipher suites listed on the left are then really just a very small subset of all the cipher suites available within TLS 1.2. 
with this vast set of 200 plus Cypher Suites, TLS 1.2 introduced a lot of flexibility into the protocol, but clearly this flexibility also leads to an increased attack surface of the protocol and how TLS 1.2 was then attacked and what the security implications regarding its Cypher Suites are, I will discuss in a following lesson. Proceeding now to TLS 1.3, we find that RFC 8446, released in 2018 and specifying TLS 1.3, only defines a total of exactly five cipher suites. Also, no additional cipher suites have yet been added to TLS 1.3, so up until today, the five cipher suites listed on the left is still the complete set of cipher suites available within TLS 1.3. Now, very importantly, all the five cipher suites of TLS 1.3 use authenticated encryption with associated data ciphers, which simultaneously provide confidentiality as well as authenticity to the application data exchanged. The first two cipher suites listed at the top of the list are cipher suites making use of the GCM block cipher mode of operation, ones with 128 bit keys and SHA2 with 256 bit hash values to be used within the HMAC based key derivation function HKDF, and ones with 256 bit keys and SHA2 with 384 bit hash values to be used with HKDF. Besides GCM, also, two cipher suites are defined that make use of the CCM block cipher mode of operation, which is besides GCM a second instance of authenticated encryption with associated data. The fifth cipher suite available within TLS 1.3 is then a cipher suite that makes use of cha 20 poly 1305 as an authenticated encryption with associated data cipher, where cha 20 is a stream cipher and poly 1305 is a message authentication code, which when combined together, simultaneously provide confidentiality as well as authenticity. Clearly, TLS 1.3 thoroughly cleaned up on the number of cipher suites, which may make TLS 1.3 slightly less flexible than TLS 1.2 with its 200 plus cipher suites, but with this thorough cleanup and a total of five cipher suites only, TLS 1.3 now of course managed to significantly reduce its attack service when compared with TLS 1.2. This sounds very promising how the security of TLS 1.2 with its 200 plus cipher suites and how the security of TLS 1.3 with its total of just five cipher suites then really look like and what the security recommendations are on all the cipher suites available, I will discuss in a following lesson.